Welcome to my tutorial on how to create a microstrip line within CST. To set up the following environment and to get to the same um, page that I'm on now, please refer to my previous videos. Okay, you should see the exact same following screen. The first thing we want to do is just to understand and conceptualize well, what size is our substrate going to be. Now in my mind I'm thinking a one centimeter substrate. So I'm going to write down the bottom, board size equals, uh, let's make it actually 30. So 30 millimeters, three centimeters. Now, what thickness is this board going to be? Well, I'm gonna compare it to real life PCBs, such as maybe I want some Rogers board or some FR4. And then I'm gonna look up uh, the thickness of a certain Rogers or FR4 board, and then I'm gonna input it into this. Now in my mind, I'm gonna use the use case of a 0.5 millimeters of magnesium oxide. So I know that the thickness of this, so sub T equals 0.5 millimeters. And I also know what the epsilon R is. So I'm gonna write ER for the dielectric constant. And in this case, it's 9.7. Now this is gonna change. Let's say if you're using Rogers uh, 4003C, you're going to use the inbuilt um, epsilon R. And uh, you're then gonna to have to calculate a different width for a 50 ohm line. So that is our goal. So here I've got epsilon R is 9.7. I got my substrate thickness, my board size, and then I've got one more parameter is the width of the transmission line. Now I'm not too sure what this is going to be, so I'm gonna write width 50, and I'm gonna set it as one for now. Our first step is going to be to calculate what this width is for a 50 ohm line. As I mentioned in my previous videos, we're going to use one of the macros. Click on home, macros, calculate. Calculate analytical line impedance. The following window should appear. Please click on the drop down bar to thin microstrip. Please enter the following uh, variables of your design, or if you're following on with this design, the thickness of the substrate is 0.5, the width I've guessed at 1, and the epsilon r, which is 9.7. I'm going to leave it at 5 gigahertz and click calculate. It's calculated that a one millimeter width line is 33 ohms. I want to achieve a 50 ohm line. So I'm gonna slowly tune my width until I get a 50 ohm line. So I know if I want a higher impedance, I need to make the width smaller. Let's go 0 0.6. 45, nearly there, let's go 0 0.5. Nearly there, 49. I'm gonna go 0 0.4. 9 and calculate that. Oh, maybe 0 0.48. Perfect. There we go. A 50 ohm line. So I'm going to copy this width and I'm going to exit this function. Now, in my variable width 50, I'm going to put the new value of 0 0.48. Now I'm ready to go to make a 3D structure. First, I'm going to create the substrate, which is going to extrude in the ne negative Z direction. Okay, first I'm going to go up to modeling. I'm going to use a brick to create this. And I'm going to either press escape or I can make a roughed version. I'm going to click escape to go straight to my dialog box. And I'm going to name it substrate. Now I'm going to center this about the X axis. And this is the difficult part about CST is getting used to the coordinate system. So to center my substrate in the middle, it's going to be board size or for the minimum, negative board size on two, and then board size on two for the max. And it's just a copy and paste for the X and Y. So the max, copy it to the max. Now here's the most important part when creating uh, microstrip lines within CST. You need to make sure the min value here is your negative substrate thickness and your maximum value is zero. So we want it to extrude in the negative Z direction. Let's preview this. Perfect. Okay, the last important thing is we need to change the material. 
If you're using something like FR4 or Rogers, please load from the material library. For example, Rogers, and here are your boards. Lossy and loss free. Loss free will be a bit faster, lossy will be more accurate. Okay, because I'm using my own material of magnesium oxide, I'm going to close this and go new material. I'm going to set the epsilon to 9.7. But I'm also noting that this is constant over frequency and I know that the relative permittivity of a material will change over frequency. So anyways, I'm just going to accept that there's going to be some small errors and choose 9.7. It's always best to select the material if it is in the material library. I'm going to rename it to MGO and I'm going to click different color and click OK. So we have MGO, I'm clicking preview. I'm going to now double check that it's protruding in the negative Z direction by zooming in and by clicking control left click. As you can see, yep, perfect. I'm going to click spacebar to reset my view and I'm going to click OK. OK, lovely. We've done the substrate. Now we're going to do the ground plane. I'm going to flip it onto the bottom side so the bottom side is exposed. I was using control left click to move. I'm going to click S on my keyboard, which will open up picks, pick point, edge or face. Double click on the bottom face. I'm going to add another parameter, which will be um, PEC thickness, and I'm going to make it 0 .0, 0 0.01 start off with. I'm going to click extrude from the face at a height of PEC thickness, and I'm going to change the material to PEC. So this is going to be a lossless material. If we were to do a more extensive test, we would use a material like copper. But we know that would take um, more simulation time. Uh, but we'll have a more accurate result. So this is the loss-free, um, the pure electric constant. Now, we can double check by clicking preview. And we see we have a very thin layer of conductive material. Perfect. I'm going to call this GP for ground plane and click OK. Spacebar to reset view, control click to flip back on the front side. So now our ground plane is perfectly set. Next I'm going to draw a microstrip line. Now we could make a brick and we could set up the geometry to be perfectly in the middle here and we could tune the values. But rather than that, we're going to make it a little bit easier by doing this. We're going to go curves, line. We're going to start at the bottom of the substrate and bring a line all the way up to the top. Now these values are ready to go. However, I want to keep it in terms of the board size. So if the board size changes, my microstrip line length will then change. So let's make it board size on two. And I'm going to copy this to positive board size. Click preview to make sure it's working and leave it as line. Click OK. Now a very powerful tool within CST is this little function here. Trace from curve. Select trace from curve and then in your navigation tree select the line you just created. Click enter. Now we can select the thickness which is going to be PEC thickness and the width which will be width 50. So our two variables down the bottom are placed in there. I'm going to click the preview button and when I'm happy with it, I'm going to click OK. So this is the reason why we set it up for the substrate to protrude in the negative Z direction, such that we can then use curves, which always appear at Z equals zero, and then we can extrude and align from that curve. So we can do more elaborate shapes if we want to, and then we can click the same button and it will spawn a microstrip line, as you can see. Okay, this is how to create a microstrip line structure. Tune in for the next video where I'll be simulating this object.